seems like with everyone having a mask on, it's a lot quieter in the church. So that's an advantage, I guess, uh, in one sense. But just a th- great thank you to everyone uh, who, is, who is wearing uh, a mask. I'm going to go under the assumption, and I, I know uh, for, for a couple parishioners here, medically they're not able to, to wear a mask. And so not a problem there. So if you're not able to wear a mask medically, we're not going to make a big deal out of it. I just hope you don't do it, uh, you know, to make a statement. But I know the parishioners that have approached me, uh, they long to be here at, at Mass, uh, and they just can't wear a mask. That's, that's very uh, uh, hard to say, I guess, in a certain sense. But uh, I just appreciate everyone make, taking the proper precautions. And, of course, coming here, uh, it is. We want to acknowledge a little bit or, a, you know, and sometimes a, a, a great risk uh, to to expose ourselves and to come and, to, in one sense, we could say, put ourselves in harm's way. But is it worth it? Is it worth the pearl of great price? Is it worth it to receive the Eucharist? And you being here tonight is a resounding yes. It's worth it. Because when we receive the Eucharist, we know it's, it's food for the journey, the journey home to God. And it gives us the grace as well to make it throughout the week. We look at uh, the history of, of the church and we see saints upon saints upon saints who died for God, some dying for the Eucharist itself placing themselves in harm's way so they could protect uh, the Eucharist or celebrate uh, the Eucharist. Of course, those, those great saints who were, were martyrs as they celebrated uh, Mass, all for uh, the pearl of great price. Today we conclude uh, this, this uh, discourse on the parables from Matthew. So we're concluding uh, Matthew chapter 13 here. Next week we'll go into uh, leaving the parables behind. But these parables, once again, always kind of have a, a little hook to them. The first one, right, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field, which a person finds, and then it's interesting here, and hides again. And out of great joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. A common person in a field finding a treasure, what are you going to do? You're going you're to pick it up. You're going to take it with you. You're not going to bury it again. This would have been uh, the, the common occurrence. If someone were to find a treasure in the field, especially 2,000 years ago, uh, they, weren't, they wouldn't hide it. They'd simply take it with them. So why does Jesus have this person hide it again and go sell everything they have to buy this field? What he's making allurement to is he can't just steal this treasure. What is this treasure? The kingdom of heaven. We can't steal it. We can't, you know, steal it from God or be like, I fooled God into getting here today, right? No, we have to give up of things. We have to sacrifice of, uh, of our life in order to attain this, knowing that God is merciful and full of love, but there still is this sacrifice. Even more prominent a parable that, that makes this clear is this famous parable of the pearl of great price. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, what does he do? He goes and sells all that he has and buys it. You know, as kids, often we'd, we'd kind of go on those, those treasure hunts. Even now, uh, people like to go on scavenger hunts. We're always, and there's great movies, you know, with uh, looking for that, that, uh, that treasure. And so we're always looking for, and this would be the same for merchants back then, always looking for that, that fine pearl. And when they obtain it, it's like, I finally found what I'm looking for. What do you have to do to attain it? Get rid of everything else. Because everything else has led to this pearl, to this encounter. And we could say to this encounter with Christ, this encounter 
with God. Remember, who is Jesus addressing these parables to? To a whole crowd, but mainly to his apostles, to his disciples. And these are, are the apostles that have truly found this pearl of great price. And they did give up of everything. They left their family. They left their job. They left everything behind to follow Jesus. And this is what God wants of us as well. Would you be willing to give up your house, to give up your car, to give up all of your money for God? It's a good question, isn't it? We like to say, yeah, Father, no problem. But that's probably not the answer right away, is it? Because we have these attachments. And I'm not asking us to get rid of all those things today, right? Your husband or wife that are here might be really upset with me. You go home and say, yeah, I got rid of the house today, right? But this is what Jesus is making allurement to, is that it's worth it if this is what he's calling us to do, to have this relationship with him, and to be in this kingdom of God with him. He goes on for this last parable. In this one, there's, there's really no hook in it. There's no uh, riddle in this last part of parable. It's simply stating, you know, as a fisherman going out, and once again, the apostles are all fishermen. That's what they would have done. You go out, you cast the net, you bring the net in, and they go where? They go in shore, and they separate the good fish from the bad fish. I think sometimes we think, oh, yeah, they take the bad fish and throw it back into the, into the water, back into the sea. No. The fish that they catch, they're all going to die. Some are good, and they're going to go to the marketplace. Some are bad, and they're literally just going to be left on shore to rot because they don't want them back in the sea because they don't want to catch them again. And so Jesus is saying here as well, at the judgment, we're going to separate the righteous from the wicked. And which ones do we want to be? Of course, those, those good fish. And so it's living for God. It's following in his ways. And it's clinging to that pearl of great price. And when we do this, of course, we know as well, we're going to have this fulfillment. Another great pearl of great price, once again, as I mentioned, being in the homily, is, is simply coming to receive the Eucharist. We're not here putting ourselves at, at a minimal risk, I would say, very minimal, by the way, uh, just because we're coming to receive a piece of bread or, uh, and, you know, I'm not drinking this uh, a cup of wine. It's the body and blood of Christ, truly present. And how much is it worth? Well, there's a great story uh, about that. Uh, I know I've referenced it uh, before, but I think it's always good, a good reference again. And I got my mind on it a couple weeks ago at Vacation Bible School as I, I walked underneath uh, uh, over by the trees over there. One of the uh, catechists was, was reading this book, uh, The Weight of a Mass. You guys heard this book before? I think I've referenced it before. If not, if you are a grandma or grandpa or a godfather or a godmother, buy this book for your grandchildren. Buy this book for your godchildren. If you have kids at home or teenagers or anyone, we all should have a copy of this book right here. It's called The Weight of a Mass. I'll put it in the bulletin for, for next time. But it's a beautiful story, and it's based off of a true story I just want to do a very, very, very brief synopsis of how much is actually the weight of the mass uh, worth. I'm going to give you the, the true story. This one is, is based off the true story, but the true story is actually a little shorter, so we're going to go uh, with that. Many years ago in a town of Luxembourg, a captain of the forest guards was talking to a butcher. An old lady entered the shop and asked the butcher, could you please give me a little piece of meat? Only a little meat, he asked, but how much are you going to pay me? The poor woman explained, I am sorry, I have no money, but I will hear mass for you. The butcher and the captain did not care much about the Catholic religion, and they began to scoff at the old woman's answer. All right then, said the butcher, you go out and hear mass for me 
And when you come back, I'll give you as much meat as the mass is worth. So the woman left, and she, she went to church. When she approached the counter, and the butcher, seeing her, said, All right, then, we'll see. He took a piece of paper and wrote on it, I heard a mass for you. He then placed the paper on the scale and a thin bone on the other side, but nothing happened. Next, he placed a piece of meat instead of the bone, but still, the paper was heavier. Both men were beginning to feel ashamed of what they had said. The butcher then placed a large piece of meat on the scale, but still, the paper was heavier. The butcher was shocked and examined the scales, but they found they were right. What do you want, my good woman? When I must give you a whole leg of lamb, he said to her. He placed the whole leg of lamb on the balance, but the paper still outweighed the meat. A larger piece of meat was put on, but again the paper remained even heavier. And all that piece of paper said, I heard a mass for you. The butcher was converted on the spot and promised to give the poor lady some meat every day. The captain, also converted on the spot, became a great lover of daily holy mass. He went to mass every day and trained his children to follow his example and to love the daily holy mass. Later, two of the captain's sons became priests. One became a Jesuit. And one became a priest of the Sacred Heart, taking the name of Father Stanislaus. The captain advised them to offer Holy Mass well every day and never miss the sacrifice through any fault of their own. Is it worth coming to Mass? Is it worth putting ourselves at this slight risk? Yes. Why? Because the Mass is the greatest thing in the whole wide world. Be able to come and share in this heavenly banquet and to receive this food for the journey. To be able to deepen this relationship with Christ and to continue in this striving of holding on to this pearl of great price. Let's continue to follow God and continue to abandon everything for him.